I've published a series of articles on how small teams, even just one lone developer, can utilize simple project management processes with GitHub to improve their workflow. So you can check out that entire series using the link in the description. But in this video, I am going to give an overview of how to enforce pull requests when merging code back into the main branch. We're going to step through setting that process up and also what it looks like to use that process. So if you want more of an explanation about what a pull request is exactly, uh, check out the tutorial in the description where I go into a bit more depth. But a pull request is basically just a formal way to indicate that you want to merge some code from some branch back into the main branch. So enforcing pull requests with GitHub is easy, but it's only free for public repositories. So what you'll need to do is go to settings and then branches. And then under the branch protection rules, we are going to click add rule. Now when creating a branch protection rule, we're going to have to set a branch name pattern. And so since we want this to apply to our main branch, I am just going to type main and then we can set whatever rules we want. So there are a few different things that we can do here, but what we're interested in is this one require pull request uh, reviews before merging. So what this is going to do is enforce that for any code that is being merged into main, it is going to have to have a pull request and that pull request is going to have to be reviewed by someone before it can be merged into the main branch. So you can set the number of reviews required. We're just going to keep that at one. And another important part of this is to also include administrators. Otherwise you will be able to bypass that requirement. Now, if you are working in a repository by yourself, you will need to disable include administrators because a pull request cannot be reviewed by the same person who submitted the pull request. So you're going to need to be able to bypass this process if you are just working by yourself. But for the sake of demonstration, even though I am working on this by myself, I'm going to keep that enabled. Okay, so I'm going to click create to apply those rules. And now we have that branch protection rule created. So let's see what happens if we try to push directly to our main branch now. So what I'm going to do is just make any sort of change to this repository. I'm just going to open up the readme file and I'm just going to put a couple of dots here. So I'll save that. Now, if you run git status, we can see that the readme file has been modified and we're already on the main branch as well. So what I'm going to do now is add that change by running git add dot git commit. And I'll just add a message here, pushing straight to main. And now I will run git push to try and push that back to the main branch. So you can see here that that push has failed and we get these errors here that say protected branch update failed. At least one approving review is required by reviewers with right access. So at this point I might realize my mistake and realize I'm not supposed to be pushing directly to the main branch. And instead I'm going to follow our normal project management process. So you don't have to do this, but what we have been doing so far throughout this project management series is creating issues for every task that we are working on. So an issue is created and then a branch is created for that issue. And then the work is completed and merged back into the main branch. Again, if you want more detail on that, you can check out the entire series in the description. But what we're going to do right now is just create an issue for updating the readme. And that's going to give us an issue number, which is 17. I'm going to head back into my terminal and I'm going to run git checkout dash B J M dash 17. And again, that's just following the same sort of rules that we talked about earlier in this series. So this creates a new branch for us called JM 17. And this is where we want to uh, push those changes back to the remote repo. So since I've just created a new branch off of the main branch, all of the commits I had on that main branch are already included in this new branch. However, if this branch already existed and I was checking it out, then commits I made on main would not be pulled over. So you can see we're on JM 17 now, and those two dots are still there, but that's only because this branch was just freshly created off of main. So if you need to pull changes that you've accidentally added to the main branch onto a branch that already exists, you can quite easily do that using something called cherry pick. And I've got details on how to do that in the full tutorial 
that I'll link in the description. Okay, so if we run git status now, we can see we've got nothing to commit. Uh, we're ready to push our branch up to the re uh, remote repository. So what we can do is run git push. And since it is the first time that we are pushing this up to the remote repository, it doesn't exist yet. This branch doesn't exist in the remote repository. So we need to use the set upstream option and specify origin JM17. And then we can switch back to our repository. And we can see here that it notices that this branch has had recent changes and gives us the option to compare and pull request. Now this option won't always be there. So what we can also do is just go to the pull request tab and then we can manually specify what we want to create a pull request for. So I could just click compare and pull request directly on JM17 here, but just to show you the sort of normal way of doing it, we can click on new pull request. And then you just need to specify the base branch and the compare branch. So the base branch is the branch that you're merging into and the compare branch is the one that you want to merge into the base. So we just created our changes in JM17. So I'm going to set that as the compare branch. And on this page, we can review what has been changed, make sure it all makes sense. And then we just need to click create pull request. We can leave a comment here if we want to, and we can also uh, request reviewers. I'm not working with anybody in this repository, but we would be able to tag people in there and then just click create pull request. So once the pull request is created, it will be listed in the pull request tab. I'll just go out and back in to show you that. So you just click on the pull request tab. We can see the pull request there. And this is currently having checks performed by Netlify. We're not worried about that in this instance. This won't actually block us from merging. It is this review for the pull request that is going to stop us from actually merging this into main right now. So you can see here it says merging is blocked. Merging can be performed automatically with one approving review. So if I try to click on merge pull request now, I can't actually do it. So what we need is for this pull request to be reviewed by someone. And that can be done just by going to the files changed tab on the pull request. And we'll be able to see all the changes here. And then the reviewer can click on review changes, uh, leave any necessary comments and then decide whether or not to approve this. So I would just click approve and then submit review. Uh, but I can't actually do that now. As I mentioned, you can't review your own pull requests. So I can't actually set this approve option. Now, personally, I would like it if GitHub did allow you to uh, approve your own pull request, or at least if there was some setting to allow that. But unfortunately, what you do need to do is remove that inclusion of administrators on the branch protection rules. So if you do want to have this process set up where you create pull requests and merge them, and you are working on the repository by yourself, you are going to have to disable the include administrators option, which unfortunately will allow you to directly push to main. So you can still go through the process just for the sake of using that process, uh, but it isn't actually enforced. You will be able to skip it because you're an administrator. So I've updated that rule now, so I can come back to my pull request and you'll see that we now have the option to merge the pull request, but it is red. So this is because we don't have the required reviews to merge this yet, but we are an administrator. So we can just straight up bypass that by using our administrator privileges. And then we can just click confirm merge. In a more ideal scenario, you would have multiple people working in this repository and someone other than you would actually review your code. They would then provide that necessary review and it could be merged normally. But the end result is the same here. We have now successfully merged that pull request. Our JM17 branch has been merged into the main branch. And if we check that out now, we should be able to open the, the readme file and you can see we have those lovely two dots present in our readme. Using pull requests like this creates a much more formalized process and allows for easy collaboration and code review among multiple developers. If you are just a single developer working in a repo, there isn't as much benefit to doing this, but it's still not a bad idea to follow this process just for the sake of improving the way you work with Git and GitHub. And remember, you can check out the full tutorial in the description along with the entire series on 
simple uh, project management, continuous integration and delivery and other cool stuff like that. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.